Welcome, everyone, to um, Level Up. I'm very happy and excited for what's happened uh, in the short time that we've been together. Thank you so much to all our guest poets for coming and giving your experience, um, giving your care, um, showing your hearts to us. Thank you to the students for being brave and for trying new things. Um, my name is Joy Jimenez, and I'm the organizer of this first series, and it's been great. And so today, what we're going to see is a uh, the result of that, um, the fruition of coming together. And I'm really excited that it's happening on this side of town, the far west side, um, because um, there needs to be more arts education and spoken word over on this side of town. So uh, this is like feels like a seed to me. Um, and so our poets and our artists will be introducing themselves and will be coming to the mic to give their um, original work. And so thank you for being a good audience, and thank you for being here today. And so I will wel welcome our first um, songwriter and composer to the mic, Sean Wesley S Sitton. And um, get the mic ready for him.
I have to do my pieces a cappella that aren't a cappella pieces. But it's okay. I sprouted from the tree of the broken because the seed was planted in the garden of regret and resentment. In that first appearance, you really don't notice because the roots look deep and the fruits it's prevalent. But examine the roots a little longer and you'll come to find out they're kind of shriveled up because it's been a while since this tree got watered. But even if the gardener did come back around, it really didn't matter because the soil was bad from natural causes within the ground. That's why the fruit is really rotten. Although it looks good to eat it, I would say it would be forbidden. Unless, of course, you're immune to the poison because that's all you've ever known. Then by all means, this fruit would suffice for the appetizer and the main entree. Just don't pass the leftovers to the dogs under the table that escaped from the garden of covered blemishes and rich divided houses. Cause although they wandered off, they did nothing wrong. And they've always been innocent. I separated from the crow when I brushed up to the garden of progression and fulfillment. But what I left behind is what I really brought with me. I didn't have the energy to make this move. Or oh, I first thought it was true. Then I realized it was the right thing to do. I got planted next to General Sherman. But nothing general about the Sherman tree showed me the point to desire your dreams. Taught me how to drink. Roots got deep and was a wonderful thing. Until the pond got drained and Sherman cut down. I think I put it all together. Oh, I'm still a dreamer, but all this time I've been drinking empty water. Trying to quench the thirst because I'm dehydrated, mentally migrated. And last night it worked. So either I'm tripping and intoxicated, like either I'm tripping and intoxicated, or the history I know fails a repetition. But even though I'm sober minded, this hurt has got me lifted. Cause now I'm in a contradiction, and these stars got me wishing I'd find a host to refill the bomb. But now I'm breaking the sweat, and the cast won't fit. I can fill it up with sorrow. That's easy to do when I contemplate the day before tomorrow. The water was flowing and the taste was pure, but contaminated when it got ear that the mouth was about to taste. Burst off conniving ways. The root was bad and it was evident, even though it was airbrushed paint. The artist got parched, drunk, everything you reached didn't water the seed. And properly trained with horrible teeth. And so I gotta find out, is the one to blame? The one drinking empty water, only trying to maintain? Or the one who unintentionally jumps the way. I'll make it back to that garden one day and truly find out how the root didn't fade. Though I'm from the tree of the broken, I control my own fruit and will build my own garden. Thank you. He's pitching the picture just to strike out the frame and crop out the imperfection so he can permanently hang. I guess this eagle's luck ran dry when he banked into debt and couldn't fly from the scene. Was plugged in but not connected, now Ted Bow, he's on his knees. Cause now we have alarm clocks, places to be, and people to meet so they can hear him speak. But it's only empty words, there's nothing in return. But I really like that poem, sir. But if they only knew, the show that he used was to dig up memories that shouldn't have stayed buried. To relive moments when he's on that platform, he pointed to empty seat to put his father in. Cause he hasn't been around for a while now. Then after the show, it wouldn't be empty compliments, but filled up conversations that get engraved in the brain. <laughs> he don't even know their name, but they thought they hadn't figured out when they heard the songs that he made. To an extent that might be true, Cause it really only plays through when somebody truly listens. But little do they know, he's really on a mission to make his family different. 
That's really his ambition. Yeah, that's really his ambition. Since the last time that y'all spoke, a lot about him has changed. Like now he has tattoos and he loves the art on his body. And he's in college, dude. He remembers when you doubted, said he wouldn't graduate. But the put down only elevated him to right your wrongs that you meant for him so your words don't live on. But his dude, he already sees the fruit. He has bars too. That could be deep like an anchor or shallow enough to swim through. And he didn't even tell you about the show. Because he figured you had work or something. But there he go again, making assumptions. Man, he don't even know their name. But they thought they had to figure it out when they heard the songs that he made. To an extent that might be true. Because they really only plays through when somebody truly listens. But little do they know, he's really on a mission to make his family different. That's really his ambition. Yeah, that's really his ambition. Thank you. Hi. My name is Mandy Manlata. I have lines slowly creeping into the corners of my eyes. But I can hide them with a filter. They'll never know I have tiny crow's feet. I've gathered a couple of extra pounds over the years, but I can conceal them with the slight retouch. They will never know that another diet failed. I have this blemish that crept up last week and it's taking its time to fade. But turn a little to the left and the light skips my cheek. They'll never know I still break out like an adolescent. I'm a smart ass, I'm full of turmoil, losing my husband, my home, and my mind all simultaneously. But my status, it reflects security and pride. They will never know that my life is a mess. When I have a bad day at work, I come home and I yell at my kids for absolutely no reason. It's not their fault. But on Mother's Day, I get tagged in memes that make me look like I'm the mother of the century. They will never, ever know how I struggle to be a decent mom. I'm extremely jealous, and I can't stand her and her charmed life. I can't stand her stupid makeup tips, but I like nine out of 10 of her statuses so it doesn't look like a fake like. <laughs> they will never know how much I really don't like. I carry anger in my heart for those that have done me wrong, but I post pictures of butterflies and hummingbirds and inspirational quotes. They will never know that I'm full of spite. I have financial issues, like the ones that led to this morning's hot pink notice on the door. Yeah, but I can hashtag this afternoon's gourmet salad. They will never know it was a sympathy lunch from a friend. I struggle to maintain work-life balance. It's a tug of war between home, kids, friends, poetry. But I have stellar business endorsements on LinkedIn. They will never know why I really left my last job. I question God about things that have happened to me and those around me, but I'm sure to check in the church every Sunday. They will never know how much I really doubt God. They will never know any of these things about me because I hide them behind an LED screen. All they know of me is what I want them to know and none of who I really am, which is a real shame because the real me is so much cooler than that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I am Erica Land. Hi. Hi. I'm a 21st century war poet. So this poem I'm going to do is called Adrenaline. One strike, two strikes, the towers fall. The world is sad, he gets mad, we all get mad, but it's his shot to call. Someone tell me when is the adrenaline going to wear off? One war, two countries, we must invade them all. To avenge the deaths of how many people? The total's always wrong. See, his excuse, our belief, weapons of mass destruction. Someone tell me, when is the adrenaline going to wear off? 
Not one, not two, not even 10 years later. If you ask him where are we with this stupid ass war, he'd probably simply say, right where we need to be. While he's out hunting deer with old Dick Cheney. For him it has, for us it has not. Someone tell me when is the adrenaline going to wear off? Not one, not two, but three deployments later and I can't sleep at night. So I killed the sand grains that are blown through the door, thinking to myself, when am I going to go home? Is it going to be when the adrenaline wears off? It never wears off. Two people, one divorce. She doesn't understand that I have PTSD, so she left me. Now I am all alone. Someone tell me, when is the adrenaline going to wear off? Someone tell me, when is the adrenaline going to wear off? I'm staring at the clouds. Maybe it should right now. One click. The war, it's a piece of me now. Two clicks. No matter how hard I try to throw it away, I can't put it down. Three clicks, man, the adrenaline sure is pumping now. Four clicks. I can't let go of that man who was staring me in the eye when I was letting him die. Fifth click, boom! Ascension to the clouds. Finally, the adrenaline rush has calmed down. Thank you. All right. Wow. Thank you, Erica. My name is Frank Hicks. I'm here to read the Pittsman's advice on the continuum. <laughs> Continuity and perpetuity. Life goes on and on. No stopping, no tears dropping. Conclusions not foregone. Keep moving, keep improving. Soon enough, expend effort, no brooding. The testing of your resolve is what makes things evolve. This is the continuum. Every action incites reaction. There's no time to wonder. To slumber is to blunder. Every you should confront, let me be blunt. Men of renown do not stop or slow down. They don't care if you frown. They don't care if you drown. This is the continuum. Keep going without measure. Who said there would be pleasure? More money is the goal, don't add up the toll. Keep driving, keep striving. Soon enough you'll be arriving. Don't you wanna see Nirvana? Don't be a chump, push over that hump. This is the continuum. Here, give me that. You had your turn with the bat. You took your swing, but you missed. I'm the king, and I'm pissed. Go sit in the bleachers with the rest of the leaguers. It's only perfection that stays in this section. You may have tried, but you're not qualified. No second chances. This is the continuum. Well, wait, what's that? Are you still holding that bat? Hold on a minute. Don't such anger exhibit. Put that club down. I'm a man of renown. You ought not treat me like this with intentions remiss. I own all the seats in the whole stadium. I get to say who has to leave or stays in. Now, you must go. This is the continuum. So, what is the purpose of this verse? If life's course I could reverse, I'd listen less to experts self-appointed, no matter by whom their expertise anointed. I'd more often challenge authority. I'd strive with my own eyes to see, pay attention with more alacrity, to the plain truth of what is here. Because you see, certainly for me, we are the continuum. Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're having a good Saturday afternoon. I didn't say anything yet, y'all are clapping. Yeah. <laughs> So my name is Andrea, I go by vocab on stage. Uh, this poem is about my best friend. It's called Sacred Tongues. Are our tongues not sacred? So much so that we have buried them in the dirt with our forefathers wailing. 
Who am I to speak on her skin? Red and hewn from earth, amber touched by terracotta, she has found her worth in forming her heritage around the sun. She speaks to me in a dialect akin to my own, but our worlds are as similarly vast as the waters that separate our ancestors. She, like me, has birthed no ravens from her womb, but her hair is as dark as onyx excavated at midnight. The corners of her eyes are tight and her lids are wrapped in coal. She stole ancient history from the scrolls of her upbringing and sang me a song of destiny forgotten. With lips as soft as cotton, she speaks the language, reminds me that I am so far removed from my motherland that the sands of my skin can't recognize trade winds blown from the Ivory Coast. And what I yearn for the most is a connection to the roots stemming upward from my family tree. I yearn for her to see a little bit of herself when she looks at me. I wish I was not raised in ambiguity, wilting in uncertainty, peeking through plantation quarters shrouded in mystery, stroking indistinguishable traits handed to me through genes and homogeneous origins that I cannot see. I am only knowledgeable of five generations that came before me, but the palm of my outstretched hand cannot summon or command a grasp to comprehend who I really am. Never will I know or understand the continent that continually circulates in my veins won't recognize the correlation of tribal dance rhythms colliding in a pulsing strain of my heart's terrain. I cannot audibly claim alliance to any country within the continent from whence I know my people came. My words seem almost profane in my exchange with this woman who has spoken in the sea that gave birth to her speech. I do not envy her. But I admire her as I ask her to teach me to say words so sacred that I cannot pronounce, pronounce. Syllables so unfamiliar to my tongue and ear that the clarity of what I hear cannot translate to my lips. So I sip enlightenment from her as she curves her mouth in a dispensation of grace that evaporates the silence and paints this moment between us in purity. I sit and I sip until I want to dig in the ground and reach for a sound that becomes so holy that it sounds sacred to me. And I speak sacredly. And I speak sacredly. Nyan shutomai samsari kunum. Give me one second, please lend me an ear. I have a story to tell, and hope, but also fear. The times were mostly kind to me, and I want to share this truth, because I feel like I trust you. darkness could really cloud your trust. I wish I knew what I was talking about, but life's okay. I'll be fine for now. I will give you, I will give you a story of my
So keep it deep inside. It's time to tell the truth. Reveal it to. It's time for me to tell you. I don't write love poems often. Cause it's not that often I feel the pressure of hollow potential. Crushing this carcass, my spirit is cramped and I, I love love. To see couples retreating into each other's smiles. Hiding secrets in each other's eyes. It's that ding dong ditch that I can't stand. The burning sensation of hot water over frozen hands, miracle lava. I'd rather not bother with the bullshit that comes along with it. I'm not scorned. I've just learned my lesson. How thieves make profession of abducting puppets and making them promises they practice in the mirror. Painting pretty pictures, impressing next to view, slightly clear. I've studied deception in school. Beautiful propaganda. Aesthetically pleasing, but treason nonetheless. The art of losing isn't hard to master. My sleeves waving on war poles, burning like my hands I've held. Too much snow in my day. Played too comfortably in the cold. Love is like a poet who freezes on stage and I can't help but feel like I've forgotten how to pray. I've been on my feet for so long. Held on for far too long, but it's not your fault, it's mine. For not trusting the way you lie, I don't write love poems often. They say you lose them how you get them. And I got her after I spotted her at some poetry spot I thought I had to get her. Admittedly, I assume we had shit in common. It makes sense to approach it. Typically, the story goes, I adored her. And she ignored me until she heard how beautifully I fashioned my feelings into rhyming sentences. And since then, I've known the texture of completion. I've Grown unappreciative of secrets as we became our set family secrets. I mean, she couldn't keep her secrets. And though I've had every opportunity to expose her, my love can only show her the snow. Line for line, my genius etched on ribcage in dedication to my gullibility, wearing my soul for decoration. Moths and butterflies feel the same. Moths and butterflies feel the same. I, I don't write love poems often. Cause it's not that often that they write about me. Yeah. Give a round of applause for all the performers so far. Yeah. Shout out to Sean. I really love that song. Like, this is my city song. I'm gonna put that in all my poems. Like, this is my song for Monica. Song for Monica. Or whomever. I just made that name up. Hello. No. Or it could be the battery, I don't know. Uh oh. So I'm in charge of this. What do we do? It's the mic's fault. It is. Um, this is a poem about a problem I kind of have. Uh oh. Tonight, my phone was hacked by a gremlin named Whiskey. Uh -huh. I am so sorry. But the gremlin told me that this is for the best and that you needed to hear this. So like a devout Christian NASCAR driver, I let Jesus take the wheel <laughs> at top speed. <laughs> Tonight, I am devil may care, spirits in my cup. Tonight, I'm like yoga pants. I don't care how the world sees me. This is me. And at one point, you loved this. You should see how I write it, because I have like a ton of O's. Like, it's like, literally just like, uh. 
Truly, I wish I could have texted something more clever, like Adele lyrics or whatever. But this text is a gravestone of things needing to be off my chest. Are you even awake right now? Don't answer. Keep dreaming. Love, somewhere during us, I realized my purpose. I'm a kamikaze. I crashed into things really well. And you were a smile like gravity I fell into, but sometimes what we fall into, even love can destroy us. Kind of like Willy Wonka when Augustus Gloop fell into the chocolate river and got sucked up into the pipe. See, that was kind of like us. But see, I don't know which one of us was the kid or the river. All I understand is that I am this fallen, broken thing who is truly sorry for the length of this text. And I guarantee you missed to use punctuation, semicolon. But since us, I promise to pledge allegiance to broken things, realizing that the heart wants what the heart wants, even if it wants nothing. And yesterday, on a billboard, I saw an ad that says, the force awakens. And I took that to mean that we as people can get even the most difficult things sorted. So, ex-love, now friend. I'm just so elated that we've made it to this point where we can return in a glass bottom boat and occasionally survey the wreckage that was us and say, damn, we survived that. And it still looks beautiful, even at the bottom of an ocean. Yeah. <laughs> We're coming to the end of our public performance. I want to say thank you to Nowcast SA for coming to video this. This will go onto YouTube where you can then share, um, get the link and things like that. Um, we will have Amanda, uh, the poet. You go by that? I'll, Amanda Flores. Oh, okay. Amanda Flores is closing out the evening. Um, and uh, before we do that, I will try uh, to do an improv poem. And um, anyone who does improv poems know that Sometimes they're awesome, and sometimes they're, they just fall flat. So <laughs> it's just the way it is. Um, and so we'll just do the, the same uh, kind of gimmick, which is um, three words that I'll take from you and then try to put something together. Marbles. Mute. Exit. Marbles, mute, and exit. <laughs> we didn't plan that. <laughs> so I don't like alliteration, so. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't like alliteration, so don't expect that in this poem. I mean, even though my marbles sometimes are my muse, and sometimes my muse is mute when I'm trying to find my music, I find that my memory can't seem to mine anything interesting inside of all of those little paper boxes that I left behind. So. I don't like alliteration, so I'm not gonna try. I, there's the exit door, and if you ask me for more, I'll probably run out of it as fast as I can. It's like Minecraft, I'll just like dig my way out, I don't know. I just don't like alliteration. <laughs> and I don't like to be pushed in ways that um, make me do things like um, mimic other poets as they uh, get on the mic and they show their, off their beautiful minds. I just, I can't do it. Um, but what I've seen today has brought me to new heights of trying. I'm gonna go ahead and get myself back on the mic and keep on pushing because I love fighting through all of the things that push and pull and take us down and I want to find my way forward. So maybe, 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 maybe in the future I might find some alliterative things to use. In the meantime, let me say thank you to the muse, to the mute, to the lost marbles, to the memories, and always to that exit door. Keep that plan in your pocket for when you need it and you can't find any more M words. And for <laughs> now, I say thank you and may the force be with you. <laughs> So we'll welcome our last poet to the mic, and that is Amanda Flores, who also helped us coaching. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. We want to say thank you also to Black Box Music and Arts for having spoken word on this side of town, and we hope to have a lot more events, um, and maybe with like bring your own uh, beverage type of stuff in the future and things. So uh, stay tuned. And so Amanda, Yay! welcome to the mic. Greetings out there. 
My name is Amanda, Amanda Flores. I would just like to say that uh, there are a few things I don't like to do. The first thing is I don't like to bring my beverage on stage. Um, so it's something to consider as poets. And secondly, I hate reading off my device. That being said, I'm going to read off my device. <laughs> because there was a hubbub of clocks this morning and they all blocked the way to my notebook, which is where, from where, I would normally read this. Though it should be up here by now. Um, the poem I'm sharing tonight touches on many of the hardships that a poet encounters before the final work hits the stage or page, and though it focuses on writers concretely, I think it illustrates much of the behind-the-scenes action that artists of all disciplines encounter before the final piece emerges. Seemingly seamless, or some may go so far as to say absolutely not seamless and very hard. So much so that you're willing to attend workshops. <laughs> Do you think that we just write a poem? That we just gather our supplies, pen, paper, write, write, and then it's five happy hours, snag a seat, order something cold to think, head home, preheat the oven, set the poem out to thaw? Do you reckon, after hearing of the hardships at hand, our office supplies are waiting to work miracles while we sleep? Like birds and mice who tailor ball gowns through the night, our tape conspires with our paper clips, if only to help us Hold it together. The little cobbler elves visit the scratch out buried in my notebooks and reupholster them by morning. And no, my poem doesn't wake up like this. He said we must have been born with them, these poems, like it was inside us all along. Like I didn't just find out how many light bulbs it takes to change this poem. Like I didn't take five too many visits to sour pastimes to conjure up the sentiment in stanza six. Shucks. You think I was born with this poem? That it came in tow with these genes? Well, thank you, but this poem is not my father's nose or my mother's chin, though this poem may be their English degrees, and not from <laughs> This poem's not innate, not a birthmark, nor a mole. Think these poems came beneath the pillow after the last of my baby poems fell out? That my syntax and diction are a direct result of my being a cavity-free kid? Oh, perhaps, but now my permanent poems are coming in, and is it supposed to hurt this much? Do you think that I just make a poem that we, just bake them up, that I toss on my apron, gather my ingredients and freshly printed recipe and follow along with my favorite chef on Food Network while my notebooks preheat to 451. No, man. <laughs> and truth be bold, and it is, I don't know what size party this can feed. I have no idea how many this poem will serve. But who is truth to keep me from still trying to dish it? Rest up, please. I make this poem from whatever I have in my pantry, most of which is expired. Fifteen life hacks for making poems, not Pinterested. I go on some of this, a pinch of that, and poquito, whatever that is, because that's the closest thing to a recipe grammar ever gave me for making poems. Poem. Poem, poem, poem. Perhaps you say I simply called, and there the poem came. The poem who cried canine, catchy, but a courting all too tame. Roses will be roses, but this detail's germane. You cannot call a thing to come that doesn't have a name. Mm. But a poet? Well, a poet is a poet by any other blame. We are servants of verse, the ring bearers of rhythm. We're prolific producers of the profound, a.k.a. if you're lost, pretend till you're profound. We're honest. Clever captains of the colloquial, engineers of eloquence. We are straight up sidewalk historians, y'all. We are composers of the calm. Not! We are the loud in volume and sometimes without a sound. We are the jukeboxes of our own destinies, the clowns of intellect, dukes of double entendre, commanders of creative cacophony. And I know what you're thinking. How many lyrical licks does it take to make the poetic center of lyrical happenstance pop? And we could tell you, but then we'd have to bill you. We're humanitarians. We are the meticulous tailors of talk. This is the continuum, and there is a reason you cannot find the mute button. Thank you, Frank. And that is the end of our Level Up series. Wow. Level up. <laughs> There's going to be more in the future. And uh, thank you again to all of our poets. Thank you, Erica Arlan. Thank you, Miguel AGM Alcorn. Thank you, um, Andrea Vocab Sanderson. Thank you, thank Roos you Christopher Rooster Martinez. Rooster Martinez. Thank you, um, Amanda, thank you. Amanda <laughs> Flores. <laughs> thank you, that's And um, I am Joy Jimenez, and we Joy! look forward to doing this again. Yay. Have, have a great evening.